I did a video last week on uh, how I was building a $25 million business on YouTube. And honestly, it didn't get as many views as many of the investment videos I do. But I felt it was probably the most important video I've ever done. So I want to bring that to your attention. I think it's the most important video that I have ever done, and I think you should go back and take a look at it if you truly want to accumulate wealth. The other thing then that happened that was very interesting is Richard wrote me this morning, and Richard said that he had heard me at some point um, mention that you should invest in the person, and I was referring to, to Mark and Jeff and um, Larry and the, the very, and Elon. And he said, I took that to heart, Richard said, and I want to invest in you. <laughs> he says, I, I want to invest in best of us investors. I hadn't been expected that. I didn't see that coming. Um, but it opened my mind to some ideas. And there are people, there are some of you out there who want to move on this route faster, who want to get wealthy faster, then you're going to be able to do it investing in the stock market. Because some of you tell me that, you know, you've got $10,000 $10, to invest. Well, if you make 10% on that, um, you aren't going to make all that much. But on the other hand, if you got that $10,000 and you can put it into a business, a YouTube channel might be a, a, a way to go. You can buy a darn good camera and a good mic. And if, if you've, you've got some creative skills and you've got some ideas, um, you can build a business. I, I got an uh, email from uh, Stefan. Stefan is a Frenchman. He directed me to his YouTube channel, and he does basically the same thing that I'm doing, but he does it in French. And I told him, you know, don't try to reinvent the wheel. My channel's doing well. Uh, Graham Stevens' channel does well. Meet Kevin does well. Just copy do what they're doing and do it in French. Uh, look at other YouTube channels and, and, and see what they're doing and how they're growing and, and figure out your take on it that is maybe more personal, more involved. So then I got to thinking that how I built my financial planning business. To be very honest with you, I was not that good of a financial advisor, and I've probably told you that before, because I didn't read. I didn't read books. I was out trying to capture assets. I was a salesman. I was trying to convince you to give me your million dollars worth of investments, and I would invest it for you. And, and basically, all I did was follow the model that Ameriprise told me to follow. Basically find out some information, what their life situation is, and then put them in a portfolio that is widely diversified so that when the market goes up, they do relatively well. And when the market goes down, they don't do relatively so bad. And that's what I did. It wasn't until I retired and I started reading and studying the stock market and studying individual stocks and coming up with a plan and a theory that I became what I, what I believe to be an astute investor. What I do want to tell you, though, is how I built that financial planning practice. Um, and I want you to be aware that there are 90, 79 million baby boomers that are going to retire between 2011 and 2035. Now, something you need to know about those baby boomers is they are the most entrepreneurial group of people that's ever passed through this earth. They have built substantial building businesses, whether it be roofing companies or plumbing companies or financial practices, whatever. They've built businesses. The one thing I, I have a friend who is a the largest immigration lawyer in the Southeast. He makes 
good money, millions a year. He's 63 years old, and he doesn't know how he's going to get out of the business. Neither of his children are interested in it, and he doesn't know, have an exit strategy. So I sat down with him, and I said, Mike, what you need to do is find a young lawyer who's into immigration law, and you need to put him into your business and then take him and your business and sell it to a major firm. Knock on their door and say, I have the largest immigration business in the Southeast, and I want to sell it to you. And I trained my replacement. I said, if you'll do that, based on what I know about your business, you'll get somewhere in the neighborhood of $4 million for it. He says, how do I do that? (laughs) I just told you. That's how I built my financial planning practice. I was an independent contractor. Uh, I didn't own my book of business. Ameriprise got their door knocked on by the IRS and said, hey, you've got 10,000 advisors out there that are you call independent contractors. You, they have to come to the office. They have to do hours. Those are employees. You need to uh, not stop 1099-ing them. You need to W-2 them, and you need to provide them benefits. And American Express says, wait a second. I, we don't want to do that. We don't want to take on that responsibility. We don't want to insure all those people. We don't want to give them health insurance like the people in the tower have. So what they did was hire some lawyers, and they turned us into franchisees. Okay, so I got a document about that thick, eight and a half by 11, and I sat down and read it. And that was tough for me. I believe I was probably the only of 10,000 advisors who read it. But what I came away with was I now own my book of business. Those are my clients. They are not American Express's clients. They are mine. And I... At that point, I realized that was true of all 10,000 advisors in the United States. So I gathered a list of those advisors in Alabama uh, and Georgia who were over 55 years of age that were American Express financial advisors, and I wrote them each a letter and told them I wanted to buy their practice. Now, the other thing I knew is they had no idea what their practice was worth. And I also knew knew that I didn't have the money to buy them. So what I did was tell them if they would stay on for a year and transition their clients over to my clients, I would duplicate their net income of the prior year. And then... After they left, I would pay them that same net income before I took it over for five years. In a matter of two years, I bought nine practices in Alabama and Georgia. I went from a non-visioned advisor out of 10,000 to number three in the nation. I eventually took that to number one in the nation. I changed the way I did business. Up until then, everybody in the financial planning business within American Express was on an eat-what-you-kill basis. And what that means is they were on commission. I sat down with all these new clients, and I said, John and Mary, do you know how I get paid? Do you know how Wilbur got paid, who I just replaced? No, we didn't. And I explained the commission business so that every time you sat down with me, John and Mary or Wilbur, in order for them to make money, they had to move money to gain a commission. Sometimes that move wasn't in your best interest, but it was in their best interest. Because understand, they have house payments, they have car payments, they have children in college. So they were moving your money to take care of their needs, not so much yours. I'm going to make you a promise. I won't generate any commissions on you 
unless I explain to you exactly what that commission is, and that will probably be an insurance product. But any time we move money, there will be no commission. But I will be charging you a 0.75% management fee over the year. So as your money grows, my compensation grows. At that point, John and Mary and I are sitting on the opposite sides of the table. I get up, I walk around the table, I ask them to move apart, I push my chair in between them, and I put their portfolio down in front of them and say, okay, we're now a team. This is how we're going to manage your money from this point on. Does that make sense to you? I had an 88% conversion rate. I had a 90% uh, retention rate. I grew my business from $100,000 to a $2 million business in two years. Now, what I'm telling you is you do something for a living. You, you do it, and I hope you do it well. And I hope you read and you educate yourself. Somewhere in your community is a baby boomer who does the same thing that you do but has built a substantial business, and he has no way out, or she has no way out. The kids don't want the business. The, the, the cousins don't want the business. They have no way out. And they don't know how to go to maybe a firm like I explained to you with the attorney to do it. So what you need to do is dress yourself up, polish yourself off, build yourself a resume, build yourself a knowledge base, and go knock on a door and say, hey, I want to explain to you how I can design a exit strategy so that you can leave this business and have a continuing income. For tax reasons, I'm not going to pay you the full amount up front because you don't want the full amount up front. I'm going to show you how you can build a cost basis in the business. So the only thing that you pay taxes on, as I pay you on an annual basis, is the interest on the loan that you're giving me, in essence, to buy your business. Their eyes will light up because they've never heard of any such thing. And you will then take your expertise and grow that business and you'll become a millionaire. That's how I did it. It doesn't take any genius. It just takes creativity. And then... It takes you willing to do the work and spend not 40 hours a week and punching a clock, 80 hours a week and working seven days a week until you master this thing and get it going. So the other avenue that I've already discussed is do what I'm doing right now. And that is create a digital business, create a YouTube channel. And I've had about five of you who have reached out to me and said, I think I have something I'd like to do. And my agreement with them is I will promote your YouTube channel. Now I want you to think about something else. TV, think about my channel right now. And I think of YouTube as NBC. They are the network. I auditioned and they accepted and they put my show on their channel. YouTube totally controls how many people see my thumbnail, how many people see my com commercial. A weekend ago, they launched me. They took me from a, a nobody to a somebody, and it's continuing to grow. Well, I got to thinking, what if, based on like what Richard said, what if I turned my channel into a network? What if, rather than Carrie just explaining finances, Ran, 
who is very micro-focused, what if he also came through best of us investors? What if, I, I think his name was Dan, who wrote me this morning, who digs and finds stocks. He was he was showed me a stock on a company who makes tasers. What if he became a part of best of us investors? And somehow we grew this thing together. And then I got to thinking, what if I gave you a way into this business and your job was to go get 10, 15, 20, 100 other subscribers. And somehow, as this channel grew, and I don't want to use the word stockholder because now I'm dealing with the SEC and all that some, but somehow, as you helped me grow this channel to a million subscribers, to 2 million subscribers, to 10 million subscribers. Somehow, you participated in it. What if one of you was extremely good at as a writer and you took over the responsibility of my morning newsletter and somehow we monetized that morning newsletter? And what if one of you out there was extremely good at taking the video I shoot and editing it and speeding it up like some of you want to do, and you took over that function. You don't have to be in this office. You don't have to be with... You could be on the other side of the world. But what if... And then you had the ability to put some of these fancy graphics I see on there. What if you became that part of this business, this network. And this is mind-boggling. And what if we then grew this thing to be so big that Google wanted to buy us? Or maybe the Disney Channel wanted to buy us? What, what, what if? Could that happen? Hell yes, it could happen. <laughs> It, it probably will happen because I just thought of it. And I have learned in my life, if I can think about it, if I can imagine it, and if I can connect the dots, I can make it happen. And now if I've got you helping me who are connecting their own dots and saying, Kerry, I'd like to invest in you. Like Richard said, I never thought of that. But I am now. So, the message today is you can become a millionaire. You can go find a business and put yourself into it. You can find, build yourself a YouTube channel. You can offer me something that you can become a part of this YouTube network. I don't know. But between us, I think we can figure it out.